my uh, countrymen as of the 21st of uh, this month i signed proclamation number 1081 placing the entire philippines under martial law this uh, proclamation was to be implemented upon my clearance and clearance was granted that uh, nine o'clock in the evening of the 22nd last night I have uh, proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested by the Constitution of the Philippines. The proclamation of martial law is not a military takeover. I, as your duly elected President of the Republic, use this power implemented by the military authorities to protect the Republic of the Philippines and our democracy. A Republican and democratic form of government is not a helpless government. When it is imperiled by the danger of a violent overthrow, insurrection, and rebellion, it has inherent and built-in powers wisely provided for under the Constitution. Such a danger confronts the Republic. Thus, Article 7, Section 10, Paragraph 2, of the uh, constitution provides and i quote the president shall be commander-in-chief of all the armed forces of the philippines and whenever it becomes necessary he may call out such armed forces to prevent or suppress lawless violence invasion insurrection or rebellion in case of invasion insurrection or rebellion or imminent danger thereof when the public safety requires it, he may suspend the privileges of the writ of habeas corpus or place the Philippines or any part thereof under martial law. I repeat, this is not a military takeover of civil government functions. The government of the Republic of the Philippines, which was established by our people in 1946, continues. The officials and employees of our national and local governments continue in office and must discharge their office as before within the limits of the situation. This will be clarified by my subsequent orders which shall be given wide publicity. We will explain the requirements and standards of details as soon as possible. But any form of corruption be dealt with immediately. The armed forces is already cleaning up its own ranks. I am directing the organization of a military commission to investigate, try and punish all military offenders immediately. For more than any other man, the soldier must set the standard of nobility. We must be courageous, but we must be humble and above all, we must be fair. As this is true of the soldier, it must be true of the civilian public officer. Let no man who claims to be a friend, relative, or ally presume to seek license because of this relationship. If he offends the new society, he shall be punished like the rest. Persons who have nothing whatsoever to do with such conspiracy and operations to overthrow the Republic of the Philippines by violence have uh, nothing to fear. They can move about and perform their daily activities without any fear from the government after the period of counteraction is over. The persons who will be adversely affected are those who have actively participated in the conspiracy and operations to overthrow the duly constituted government of the Republic of the Philippines by violence. But all public officials and employees, whether of the national or local governments, must conduct themselves in the manner of a new and reformed society. In addition to this, I issued general orders for the government. In the meantime, to control media and other means of dissemination of information, as well as all public utilities. All schools will be closed for one week, beginning this coming Monday. 
the carrying of firearms outside residences without the permission of the armed forces of the Philippines is punishable with death. Curfew is established from 12 o'clock midnight to 4 o'clock in the morning. The departure of Filipinos abroad is temporarily suspended. Exceptions are those of official missions that are uh, necessary. Clearances will be given by the Secretary of National Defense. In the meantime, rallies, demonstrations are uh, prohibited. So to our strikes in critical public utilities. I have ordered the arrest of those directly involved in the conspiracy to overthrow our duly constituted government by uh, violence and subversion. It is my intention, beginning tomorrow, to issue all the orders which should attain reforms in our society. This would include the proclamation of land reform all over the Philippines, the reorganization of the government, new rules and conduct for the civil service, and inefficient public officials, and their replacement, and the breaking up of uh, criminal syndicates. Again, I repeat, this is the same government that you, the people, established in 1946 under the Constitution of the Philippines. There is no doubt in everybody's mind that the state of rebellion exists in the Philippines. The ordinary man in the streets, in our cities, the peasants and the laborers know it. Industrialists know it. So do the government functionary. They have all been affected by it. This danger to the Republic of the Philippines and the existence of a rebellion has been recognized even by our Supreme Court and its decision in the case of Lansang versus Garcia, dated December 11, 1971. Since the Supreme Court promulgated this decision, the danger has become graver and rebellion has worsened or uh, escalated. It has paralyzed the functions of the national and local governments. The productive sectors of the economy have grounded to a halt. Many schools have closed down. The judiciary is unable to administer justice. Many of our businessmen, traders, industrialists, producers, and manufacturers stop their operations. In the greater Manila area alone, tension and anxiety have reached a point where the citizens are compelled to stay at home. Lawlessness and criminality, like kidnapping, smuggling, extortion, blackmail, armed robbery, illegal trafficking drugs, gun running, hoarding, and manipulation of prices, corruption in government, tax evasion perpetuated by syndicated criminals, have increasingly escalated beyond the capability of the local police and civilian authorities. The uh, usually busy centers of the area, such as cinema houses, supermarkets, restaurants, transportation terminals, and even public markets are practically deserted. Battles are going on between the elements of the armed forces of the Philippines and the subversives in the island of Luzon, at Isabela, Zambales, Tarlac, Camarines Sur, Quezon, and in the island of Mindanao, at Lanao del Sur, Lanao del Norte, Zamboanga del Sur, and uh, Cotabato. If this continues, even at the present rate, the economy of the country will collapse in a short time. In one province alone, Isabela, where the Communist Party and the New People's Army have sought to establish a rural sanctuary, they are now in control of 33 municipalities out of uh, 37. Other towns are infiltrated severely by these armed uh, elements. In, the, in this province alone, the supposed invisible government of the Communist Party has it been organized through the Barrio Organizing Committees, BOCs, 
totaling 207 in 25 towns compared to 161 in 12 towns in early 1971. In addition to the barrio organizing committees, they have also organized the barrio revolutionary committees or BRCs. In Angadanan and Kawayan Isabella, the new People's Army have established communal farms and uh, production bases. The new People's Army has started to expand its operation to Cagayan, Nueva Vizcaya, and Quirino, as well as the mountain provinces of Ifugao, Kalinga Payao, Bontoc, and uh, Benguet. Even the two Ilocos provinces and La Union have been uh, infiltrated. The New People's Army and the Communist Party have also sought to establish in a similar pattern a rural sanctuary in the province of Camarines Sur and are attempting to expand into Albay, Sonsogon, and Camarines Norte, as well as uh, Quezon province. The armed elements of the uh, New People's Army under the Communist Party of the Philippines, Maoist faction, have increased to about 10,000, which includes regulars as well as farmers in the daytime and soldiers at night. This is an increase of 100% in a short period of six months. It has increased its mass base to 100,000. Their uh, front organization operations have increased them tremendously. Example of such a front organization is the uh, Kabatam Makabayan or KM, the most militant organization of the Communist Party, which has increased its chapters from 200 in 1970 to 317 after the end of July 1972. And its uh, membership from 10,000 in 1970 to 15,000 up to the end of July this year. The Samahang Democratico ng Kabataan, or SDK, an outspoken front organization, had also increased its chapter from almost none in 1970 to 159 at the end of July this year, and has now 1,495 highly indoctrinated and uh, fanatical members. The uh, crucial point, which uh, indicates an increase in the capability, the area of operations, as well as the manpower and the firepower of the New People's Army, is the MV Kanagatan, or Palanan Incident in Palanan, Isabela, last July 4 and 5, 1972. This was the landing by an ocean-going ship of a reported 3,000 500 M14 rifles, of which only about 900 were recovered by the armed forces of the Philippines. About 30 rocket launchers of the M40 variety, of which only six were recovered from the area. Also recovered by our forces were 160,000 rounds of ammunition, two Browning automatic rifles, which were originally looted by Defector Victor Corpus from the arsenal of the Philippine Military Academy five Garand M1 rifles, one telephone switchboard, seven telephone sets, numerous M14 magazines, and many revealing subversive documents. The landing of military armaments and equipment in the Palanan incident indicated that one, that the claim of the New People's Army that they are well-funded has basis in fact. Two, that they are now have sources of funds and equipment not only inside the Philippines but also outside the country. And three, that the Communist Party and the New People's Army are capable of landing armaments, military equipment, and even personnel in many points in the long sea coast of the Philippines, which is twice the sea coast of the uh, United States. The defense establishment has admitted that there have been attempts to infiltrate the military organizations as well as the Office of the Secretary of National Defense. There have been various incidents of attempts to sabotage not only the operations of the armed forces of the Philippines, but the operations of the national government. It has been reported 
that the communication systems of the Philippine Constabulary are uh, being utilized by the subversives. The subversives have organized urban partisans in the Greater Manila area. They have been and still are active. They have succeeded in uh, some of their objectives. The violent disorder in Mindanao and Sulu has to date resulted in the killing of over 1,000 civilians and about 2,000 armed Muslim and Christians, not to mention the more than 500,000 of injured, displaced, and homeless persons, as well as the great number of casualties among our government troops and the paralyzation of the economy of uh, Mindanao and Zulu. I assure you that I am uh, utilizing this power vested in me by the Constitution for one purpose alone, and that is to save the Republic and reform our society. I wish to emphasize these two objectives. We will eliminate the threat of a violent overthrow of our Republic, but at the same time, we must now reform the social, economic, and political institutions of our country. The plans and orders for reform to remove the inequities of that society, the cleanup of government of its corrupt and sterile elements, the liquidation of the criminal syndicates, the systematic development of our economy, the general program for a new and better Philippines will be explained to you. But we must start out with the removal of anarchy and the maintenance of peace and order. I have had to use this constitutional power in order that we may not completely lose the civil rights and freedom which we cherish. I assure you that this is not a precipitate decision, that I have weighed all the factors. If there were any other solution at our disposal and within our capability which we could utilize to solve the present problem, I would choose it. But there is none. I have used the other two alternatives of calling out the troops to quell the rebellion and suspending the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus. But the rebellion has not been stopped. I repeat, it does worsen. Thus, it was discovered that when the suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus was lifted on January 11, 1972, the organization of the Communist Party had expanded their area of operation as well as increased their membership. All other recourses have been unavailing. You are all witnesses to this. So we have fallen on our last line of defense. You are witnesses to the patience that we have shown in the face of provocation. In the face of abuse and license, we have used persuasion. Now, the limit has been reached, for we are against the wall. We must now defend the Republic of the Philippines with this stronger power granted in me by the Constitution. For those guilty of treason, insurrection, rebellion, it may pose a grave danger. But to the ordinary citizenry, almost all of you, whose primary concern is merely to be left alone, to pursue your lawful activities, this is the guarantee of that freedom that you seek. All that I do and we in government must do is for the Republic and for you. I have prayed to God for guidance. Let us all continue to do so. I am confident that with God's help, we will attain our dream of a reformed society and a new and brighter world. Thank you.
when we talk about the so-called EDSA People Power Revolution, we just are not talking about those four days. For so long, the Philippines was mired in deep inequality, poverty, and misery. Altiis talaga ang mga Pilipino kay Marcos. Kaya yung merong chance to depose him, no? nagkaroon ng opportunity na mabago ang ating society, talagang lahat ay lumabas. Of course, uh, years in the making yon, no? At ang culmination ay yung EDSA People Power. Early 1980s, bumubulusok na yung ekonomiya. People started going out to the streets little by little. The U.S. was really pressuring Marcos to relinquish his powers. May international pressure kay Marcos na magkaroon ng halalan. Ipakita na meron pa siyang suporta ng tao. At nagkaroon nga nung tinatawag na snap presidential elections. Sinasabi nila, sininoy daw yung mitya ng people power. Actually, isa lang siya dun sa events na nag -lead. Doon sa mangyayari sa EDSA, pero ang tunay na mitsa talaga ng people power ay snap elections. Ang tingin ng tao, no, mababa na nga yung ekonomiya natin, tapos nadaya pa tayo sa halalan. Ang people power, para siyang isang malaking-malaking jigsaw puzzle. Guguho at magiging madugo at bayulente kung hindi nag-fall into place lahat ng teraso. Hindi siya gawa ng isang sektor o ilang tao lamang. Gawa siya ng buong bayan. Cardinal Sin called for people to protect Enrile and uh, Ramos. I am calling our people to support our two good friends. Alas 9 ng gabi, nagsimula nang magpuntahan yung mga tao sa EDSA. I drove to EDSA and found a motley group of people milling outside Camp Cranes Gate. So if Marcos or General Ver decided to snuff out that brewing rebellion, history might have turned out different. Millions really went out to the street. The estimate was three million. Tandaan natin, ang sundalo ang nagpatupad ng martial law. Takot na takot yung marami sa kanila. Pero ngayon, nung nakita nila na ang mga sundalo ng bayan naninindigan para sa demokrasya, paglabas nila sa Camp Aguinaldo, papunta sa Krami, pinapalakpan sila ngayon. Doon nangyari, yung pinaka-weirdong revolusyon na nakita ng mga tao sa buong mundo. Saan ka nakakita ng revolusyon na umurol yung mga tangke? Yung mga tao lumalapit, hindi lumalayo. Pumaharap, lumulood. Tinutulak ang tangke para umalis. Sigawan ngayon yung mga tao, yung press, yung mga tao sa loob ng camp krame. At ang nangyari, nagyakapan ngayon yung dalawang pwersa, yung Air Force, saka yung mga RAM. At 
Kasama nila yung birehen. Imbis na baril yung nilabas doon sa revolusyon, mga Virgin Mary, mga Santo Nino, mga Jesus Christ. No? Pero celebration mood na yun. Ang sabi ni Paul Laxalt sa telepono, I think you should cut and cut cleanly. I think the time has come. And Marcos said, I'm so very, very disappointed. So that was that. Sumuko na si Marcos. na patalsik natin ng diktador, nakita ng buong mundo na nagawa natin yun without shedding of blood. Of course, only for four days. But not without much sacrifice the years before that. That really started the people power trend all over the world. EDSA was also a shining moment in our history that epitomized the valiant struggle of the Filipinos for decades against tyranny, exploitation, and oppression. It even helped inspire other movements in the, re in the region and around the world. Dictatorships fell through people power after that. Yun naman ang lesson ng lahat ng nangyari sa EDSA. Eh, na hindi dapat natin inaasa sa isang tao ang kaligtasan ng bayan. Na dapat gamitin natin sa pang-araw-araw yung mga talento natin, yung mga kaya natin gawin, uh, para makatulong sa bayan, no? makaambag doon sa bayan at ipaalala sa isa't isa, sa atin, sa rinig, na ipaglaban yung kalayaan at demokrasya na ipinaglaban ng ating mga ninuno o no? pinagsakripisyohan, pinamatayan ng ating mga ninuno no? sa matagal na panahon bago pa ang EDSA. Huwag kalimutan na may history, may context ang lahat ng mga nangyayari ngayon. Ayaw nating maulit yung ating mga pagkakamali in the past. In a sense, we are where we were before EDSA, but we also are continuing to struggle where we always wanted to be after EDSA. <laughs>